Welcome back to the channel. In this video, which is also a podcast episode, I'll share some information about dialysis and kidney failure. So first, some personal experience in the healthcare system, um, and then some stats and information about it, and also what causes kidney failure and how you can prevent it. If you're new here, I'm Ben. I'm a PA, which is similar to a doctor, and I have experience in emergency medicine in particular, but also family practice and urgent care. And I've also spent a ton of time learning about fasting and nutrition so I can help people like you improve your health. So first, a little personal experience. I used to work at a different hospital, and one of the things that happened there a lot was undocumented immigrants, mostly from Mexico, would come in and they would need dialysis because they had kidney failure. Um, so what's dialysis? If you don't know, it's that blood filtering treatment where you go hook, get hooked up to a machine and it kind of um, you know, filters your blood um, to do what the kidneys would normally do. And it takes about four hours a pop. But at this hospital where I worked, um, there was a really, really long wait time because there were a bunch of people that needed dialysis. So anyway, these people would come in, these undocumented immigrants, they didn't have any more convenient way to get dialysis. So they would come into our emergency room and say, hey, I need my dialysis. And what I was doing there, um, I would be the one medically clearing them. So just kind of, you know, taking a look at their vital signs and doing a physical exam or whatever, medically clearing them so that they, they could get their dialysis. But even after I medically cleared them, they would usually have to wait something like 10 hours, <laughs> uh, some crazy amount of time. It could literally be the whole day um, before it was their turn to get dialysis. So they would hang out in the waiting room or they would go to the cafeteria and come back or they would do various different things to kind of pass the time. And so as you can imagine, that was like a really crazy time commitment um, that these people had. So they had to do that about three times a week. Imagine. Um, so these people were mostly relatively young. Some of them were in their 20s or 30s. Some of them were older. So it was, a, it was variable, but a lot of them were pretty young. So it was a pretty sad state of affairs. But of course, they didn't really have any choice. They had to find a way to get their dialysis, and they didn't have a better option because without their dialysis, they would die because you can't live without kidneys. So a while back, I listened to a Freakonomics podcast episode, and they were talking all about kidney failure. And of course, they're focused more on the economical side. So they talked a lot about how it's really expensive. Um, and a couple of stats for you. It costs almost $100,000 a year. That's about, so Medicare um, in the United States pays about, uh, about $100,000 a year or just a little less per patient with kidney failure. And overall, Medicare spends about $35 billion a year on patients with kidney failure. Um, so they were talking a lot, a lot about that on that episode, but, um, it, you know, obviously it's not just expensive. It's also a huge drag, like what I was explaining where it's really time consuming. So even if you have, you know, health insurance and you have a convenient place to go to get dialysis, it's still going to take you at least 12 to 15 hours per week to do it because you got to like go to the place and do your four hour treatment and go back. So probably like 15 hours or more <laughs> in general. Um, and once you have kidney failure, you're at a higher risk of a bunch of other health problems, whether that's heart attacks or many, many other things. And so crazily, the life expectancy with kidney failure is only about three years. Now you may be thinking, well, if I had kidney failure, I could just get a kidney transplant. Um, but it's not that easy. So there's a really long waiting list, first of all. But then even if you do get a kidney transplant, then you got to take medications that suppress your immune system, which means you'd be at a higher risk of infections and you'd be at a higher risk of cancer because, of course, your immune system helps prevent cancer. And, and so that's no walk in the park either. And uh, in the ER, sometimes we have kidney transplant patients come in and just as soon as we know that they're a kidney transplant patient, we're like, oh, okay, we got to be worried about various infections and we got to be really careful to look at how their kidneys are working they're, or their one kidney, perhaps um, one functional kidney. Um, and then we usually have to call the transplant doctor and kind of do some extra planning and so forth. And so it, basically the medical care gets a lot more complicated if you're a transplant patient. So I'm painting a pretty grim picture, right, of once you have kidney failure, it's, it's just not, not a pretty picture for all the different reasons that I've explained, um, you know, whether it's the time commitment, the short life expectancy, um, or the other challenges that come along with it. So there's good news and bad news. The good news is kidney failure is very preventable. 
in the vast majority of cases. The bad news is once your kidneys fail, that's not preventable, um, or not uh, reversible, I meant to say. So you can't fix it after it happens, but you can certainly prevent it before it happens. So if you're one of the many, many people with chronic kidney disease, which uh, I guess in the United States it's about 37 million people. So if you think about it, that's about 10% of the population, roughly. It's a ton of people. So that just means if you're, uh, those people have their kidney function is gradually getting worse. So if you're one of those many people whose kidney function is gradually getting worse, but it's not to the point where you need dialysis, well, guess what? There's still time. You can still very likely, not in every case, but very likely, prevent that from happening, preventing, prevent it from getting to the point where you have to be on dialysis. And why do I say that? Well, there are two main causes of kidney worsening kidney function, which is chronic kidney disease, and ultimately kidney failure. And those two main causes are diabetes and high blood pressure. And those two things are very fixable. Um, when I say diabetes, I mean type 2 diabetes. In this case, it is very fixable. So type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure are um, can can basically be reversed in, in, in most cases through a combination of diet and lifestyle and so forth. So that's what I'm going to talk a little bit more about right now. Though, as a quick side note, there are other causes of kidney failure, but they're significantly less common than diabetes and high blood pressure. So um, if you're one of those people who has some kind of rare genetic disease or something that's causing your kidney failure, well, that's a different story. But if you're one of the many, 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 many people who have diabetes or high blood pressure contributing to your worsening kidney function and ultimately kidney failure, that's the most common version, and it's the version that's the most treatable. Um, so basically, here's what happens in both di diabetes and high blood pressure. So again, I'm mainly referring to type 2 diabetes because that's the one that's potentially reversible. It's the much, much more common version of diabetes as well. Um, so here's what happens with both. <laughs> basically, you get high blood sugar and high insulin. So insulin is the hormone from your pancreas that gets secreted when you eat carbs, especially sugar. And after a while, if you're having too many processed carbs or just too many blood sugar spikes, then you're also getting a lot of insulin spikes and your body becomes resistant to the insulin because it's getting that signal too often. So you become insulin resistant. And one of the downstream effects of insulin resistance is your kidneys hold on to more salt and water, giving you high blood pressure. And another one is your blood sugar now is too high because your insulin is not working as well anymore. And that's called diabetes, prediabetes, and then later type 2 diabetes. So both have the same root cause. It's that high blood sugar and high insulin. So you can kind of imagine if you just get your wheels a turning and you rein there, what might be able to prevent or fix high blood sugar and high insulin. What raises your blood sugar? Eating sugar, eating carbs, um, or eating too often, you know, especially those types of food. There are other things that raise blood sugar, but that's the main one that's the most obvious, right? Is when you consume those types of things. So if you don't eat sugary things or you know refined carbs, simple carbs, starches, that sort of stuff, um, that's one way that you could prevent or fix those types of problems, and that would be called a low carb diet um, or a ketogenic diet. So if you take away that offending agent, which is the sugar and the carbs, um, and just eat other types of food, you know, vegetables and meat and whatever, and call it a ketogenic diet, um, or if you go for stretches of time without eating at all, then of course that sugar is not coming in and your blood sugar is not going to be as high or be spiking as often. And that's called fasting. So both fasting, intermittent fasting or various types of fasting, as well as reducing carb intake, you know, low carb diet, ketogenic diet, both are very powerful tools for preventing or fixing high blood pressure, as well as type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, which means if you take those things away, you're very likely to be able to prevent kidney failure. Again, that's in, that's in this scenario where you have one of those very common causes of kidney failure. If you have a very uncommon cause or a less common cause, that may not be as preventable. So think back to earlier in the episode where, where I was explaining what it's like for those people who are on dialysis, especially the ones who don't have proper health insurance and so forth and how inconvenient it is, and how there's only a three-year life expectancy and all the costs involved, which may or may not be covered by you know, some kind of insurance or government, depends on where you live. 
um, and you know all the health risks that come from it and so forth. Think back to that. And if you're someone who could get there but is not there yet, think about how you can prevent, prevent it. Because certainly thinking about prevention like this is one of the things that gets me the most motivated to work on my health is realizing, oh, that could happen, but it's easily preventable if I take these three steps. Then, you know, I find that very motivating. Over the years, that's one of the things that's really gotten me to take action is when I kind of understand how it works and what I'm able to prevent and just to be able to live a longer, happier life ultimately, right? Um, so think about how you can save your kidneys, in other words. And if you're not on dialysis, try to keep it that way. So if you want to learn more about how to use fasting to try to prevent kidney failure or to fix high blood pressure or whatever, I've got an intermittent fasting checklist that I'll link to below on the app or, or here on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, I've got a video for you right here about how to fix high blood pressure uh, quickly and a vid another video right here about how to fix blood sugar or how to improve blood sugar quickly through a variety of daily habits. And I'm going to link to several other resources below, including an interview where Megan Ramos explains how to reverse type 2 diabetes through fasting. So various resources. Check that out. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.